Arguments erupt on Empire set after Jesse Smollett's arrest as furious cast members call for him to be fired and Gabby Sidibe deletes supportive Instagram post while others stand by him and insist he is innocent. The cast of Empire is divided over Jesse Smollett's arrest, with some standing by the actor and believing his innocence while others want him to be fired. Smollett went straight to the Sign Space studio on Thursday after being released on a $10,000 bond. He reportedly pleaded with his colleagues to believe that he did not pay two Nigerian brothers to attack him in a staged hate crime so that he could get the raise, as is alleged by police. Some of the stars are FG furious about the allegations and believe he should be fired for bringing shame to the entire production, according to TMZ. Others, however, are standing by him and do not believe he is capable of concocting such an elaborate hoax. The divide has led to arguments on set, according to the sources. 20th Century Fox which said it is considering its options in light of the scandal, is yet to confirm if Smollett will continue to appear in the show. A spokesman told Daily Mail. Com on Friday morning that they were not aware of any heated arguments about him taking place on the set but gave no further details. He was sent home on Thursday without filming any scenes because it was so obvious that he had been crying, according to production sources. Among the actors who appear to be walking back their support of him is Gabby Sidib, Smollett's one-time roommate and one of his closest friends. On Wednesday, before he handed himself into police, she uploaded an Instagram post with the caption, I know him, I believe him, I stand with him. The post was a photograph of Malcolm X and a quote about the irresponsible media which turns victims into villains and vice versa. Sid Ibe had reposted it from one of Smollett's siblings' accounts. The cast has not yet finished filming the final episodes of its fifth season. Smollett scenes have reportedly been cut back in light of the controversy. He is paid $100,000 per episode of the show and there are 18 episodes in the current season which earns him a paycheck of $1.8 million. Police claimed that his motive for the alleged hoax was that he was dissatisfied with it and hoped the publicity he would get from a hate crime would bump up his salary. Smollett is insisting that he is innocent. His lawyers hit out at the Chicago Police Department on Thursday night and say the prosecutors leading the case trampled on his presumption of innocence by sharing all their evidence with the media after his bond hearing. They say they have proof small paid brothers Abel and Ola Asandero to attack him and that he did it because he wanted a raise. Among their apparent evidence of the hoax are phone records which show his communication with the pair, surveillance footage of the three of them together beforehand, allegedly plotting the stunt, and a check which small is said to have made to Abel for $3,500. Key moments in reported attack on actor Jesse Smollett. Jesse Smollett tells Chicago police he was physically attacked by two men in downtown Chicago while walking home from getting food from a Subway restaurant at 2 a.m. The black and openly gay actor tells authorities the men used racial and homophobic slurs, wrapped a rope around his neck and poured an unknown substance on him. Smollett told detectives that the attackers yelled he was in MAGA country, 
an apparent reference to President Donald Trump's Make America Great Again campaign slogan, which some critics of Trump have claimed is a racist dog whistle. Chicago police say they've reviewed hundreds of hours of surveillance camera footage, including of Smollett walking downtown, but none of the videos show the attack. Police obtain and release images of two people they would like to question. Reports of Smollett's attack draw outrage and support on social media, including from U.S. Senators Kamala Harris, Cory Booker, and Elizabeth Warren. Both Booker and Harris called the incident a modern-day lynching. Joe Biden said, We must stand up and demand that we no longer give this hate safe harbor, that homophobia and racism have no place on our streets or in our hearts. Trump tells reporters at the White House that he saw a story the night before about Smolitor and that. It doesn't get worse, as far as I'm concerned. Smollett's family issues a statement calling the attack a racial and homophobic hate crime. Smollett's family says he has told the police everything and his story has never changed, disputing assertions leveled on social media that he has been less than cooperative and changed his story. Smollett issues a statement telling people that he is okay and thanking them for their support. He says he is working with authorities and has been 100% factual and consistent on every level. Smollett gives sold out concert in West Hollywood, California, opening with an emotional speech, saying he had to play the show because he couldn't let his attackers win. At the end of the set, he announces that he fought back against his attackers, calling himself the gay to poke. Congresswoman Maxine Waters is in attendance at the concert. February 5, Chicago PD releases incident report which reveals Small did not want to call police. There is no mention of the MAGA country remark which he gave in a follow-up interview. More, his manager, gives police a screenshot to prove their call. February 11, Small finally hands over redacted phone records to prove the phone call but police labeled them insufficient. His neighbors say they don't believe his version of events. February 12, Smollett's rep releases statement to say he is the victim and that he has been telling the truth. February 14, Good Morning America airs the full interview with Smollett, in which he blasts speculation that the attack was staged as itself racist and hateful. Hours later, it emerges that two Nigerian brothers were picked up at Chicago's O'Hare Airport on their return from Nigeria the night before. Cops identify the two men as the individuals seen in the surveillance images released from the night of January 29 but will not share their names. Two television stations in Chicago Simul report the widespread belief among investigators that Smollett staged the attack as a hate hoax. Chicago's police superintendent later said that he had no evidence to prove that the attack was a hoax. Producers of Empire Dispute Media reports that Smollett's character was being written off the show. High-powered criminal defense attorney Michael Monico reveals that he is representing Smollett. Daily Mail. Com confirms they are brothers Olabanchoola Asundaro, 27, and Abimbola Abel Asundaro, 25. Later. Chicago police spokesman Anthony Guglima says the two persons of interest are now considered suspects. He says the men are in custody but have not been charged with the crime. 
Chicago police released two men without charges after arresting them on suspicion of assaulting Small and holding them for nearly 48 hours. A police spokesman said the two are no longer considered suspects and that investigators have new evidence to consider as a result of questioning them. A police spokesman said that the investigation had shifted after detectives questioned the two brothers about the attack and released them without charges. Small apart Michael Cohen's high-powered criminal defense attorney, Michael Monico, as the police investigation into the attack he reported last month took a sudden shift amid allegations of a hoax. Smollett's lawyers said on Saturday the actor felt victimized by reports he played a role in the assault, and that Smollett would continue cooperating with police. A police spokesman said that Chicago police have told Smollett's attorneys they want to do a follow-up interview with the actor. A spokesperson for Smollett's lawyers said she couldn't comment on whether Smollett had agreed to another interview.